for our next presentation. We're fortunate to have two speakers. We have Owen Allen, Senior Product Manager of Blue Voyant, and Abbas Kudrati, APAC Chief Cybersecurity Advisor of Microsoft APAC. Mr. Owen Allen is a technology evangelist and product leader at Blue Voyant, a cybersecurity managed services provider based in New York City. Owen worked 10 years at Microsoft and has been advising companies on how to improve their IT services for over 25 years. Meanwhile, Mr. Abbas Kudrati leads Microsoft's initiatives and operations to provide thought leadership and strategic direction on the development of Microsoft security products and services across Australia, India, and the ASEAN region. He consults with governments, critical infrastructure organizations, and enterprises to enable them to secure corporate data and manage risk while taking advantage of the opportunities presented by today's intelligent cloud, intelligent edge world. Your business is as vulnerable as the weakest link in your supply chain. Protect your business and your customers. Blue Voyant Cyber Experts turn tradecraft into code so you can operationalize your cybersecurity at ecosystem scale. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to um, this next session at the ISOG Summit 2021. If I could say mabuhai to all of you, my friends in the Philippines, I would. And uh, I'm really glad that you're with us today. Uh, my name is uh, Owen Allen, and I'm with a company called Blue Voyant. And uh, today our session is going to talk about ransomware. I'm from the wonderful city of Seattle, and you can see my family up there. There's actually one more granddaughter that's not in that picture. That's a couple years old, and don't tell my daughter or she will uh, not remember me uh, as often because I forgot to put her other child in there. Anyway, we're going to talk about ransomware today, and I hope she doesn't hold it, hold me, uh, hold hold me to ransom because of that photo. So, I kind of said the scourge that doesn't stop, and you know, we'll get into some. Uh, description about about that going forward but you know as i was doing some research for this the the amount of news that there is about ransomware does not stop um i think one of the most recent items just a day or two ago is that there's there's an interesting development where uh in the united states the congress has put forth uh, or one of the members of Congress has put forth a bill that would require people who um, receive a ransomware attack to notify the government or notify the public within 48 hours that they uh, had been hit by ransomware. Now, I admit I haven't thought about this for very long, but just a day now, but um, but this or just a couple of days, but this, I don't know, this doesn't. I'm not sure yet how this makes sense. It seems to me like it it adds pain, but we'll get into the whole should I pay or should I not pay as we keep going. But I wanted to put it out there because it, it, it's ransomware is being talked about at the highest levels. It's being I'm sure you and all your friends uh, have discussed ransomware. If you haven't know if you haven't been hit personally, I'm sure you know people who have been or you've heard many of the stories about how companies are attacked and. And it, maybe it doesn't stop. Maybe they keep attacking them, et cetera. And so uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going in, but I do want to show just just how much news there is. I mean, this is just from last week, and there's there's articles every day that are different articles about uh, about ransomware news. This is, um, you know, I thought I thought I was up to date on ransomware. But uh, I'm not. Uh, there is more news every time. I think one of the ones that that um, I was interested in learning more about uh, was this one. Um, and uh, I know it's been out for a while, but I haven't. Uh, but I'm I'm there. You can't learn about all this stuff all the time. That's for sure. 
And so um, Fin12 is the name of a ransomware gang, uh, and they've reached the infamous uh, goal of being able to execute on an attack uh, in less than two days. I think this is this is crazy. And um, uh, anyway, we're going to get into how these attacks happen, and it's almost too much for us to really talk about here about what happens. But um, but we need to know that it's for real. We need to know that these guys that 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 people during a pandemic are targeting healthcare. They're targeting the most sensitive places that we have, and um, and in this case, um, just trying to get in and get out as quickly as possible. Now, the the best thing that I found while I was doing this research is the Microsoft Digital Defense Report. Um, uh, this is um, over 100 pages. Um, the ransomware section is like the first 20 or 21 pages. And the other 110 pages are all other types of digital attacks and electronic uh, um, problems that we have in the world. And I just think that um, that this report, and this is um, this is at least the second year it's out. It might be the third year that it's out. But this report is one that um, that you should have um, on your computer that you should have. Um, it's been out just a week or two and um, and we're going to be going through some of the updates that are in here because this has the latest information I've been able to find. Now, the thing over on the right is the um, it are the numbers that that Microsoft of the signals that Microsoft's um, detection group uh, it, it receives. Um, on a daily basis, and uh, this informs Microsoft as they are trying to identify where the attack vectors are coming from, as they try to provide guidance to help companies uh, like yours and mine to protect themselves and to help protect our clients. And uh, I think that and 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 they do a good job. Now, Microsoft is one of the companies in the. Um, ecosystem around security that is doing a really good job. There are many others as well. We're going to talk about some of them tonight. Uh, at the end of today, um, I'm going to play at the end of the show, we'll, we'll play a, a Microsoft video that talks a little bit more about these numbers and how they're how they're an impact. Uh, but um, but for right now, I want to keep it on a couple of uh, a couple of informative pieces around ransomware. And I hope that these inform your conversations with others, perhaps. Uh, or inform your conversations at your own company. So first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce a term, and maybe, you, and, and I guess I should assume you already know this, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, or CVEs. You'll see this referred to a lot inside the news articles, just abbreviated as CVEs. And these are um, attack vectors that are well known, that, that are published, that uh, are included in in every test of a system, and um, and it's kind of frustrating that they are still included in every test of a system. When you run a test on a on a new computer or on an old computer or something that you find that might be suspicious, it searches for these things because there's still too many of the computers around that have these present on them that are not patched, and that um, and so like the oldest uh, is from 2012. And it's running a, uh, a Java runtime environment that is installed by default when you install uh, Oracle Java uh, Special Edition 7. I've installed that software probably back in 2012, and uh, and it and it was very convenient to have it automatically installed. Um, but even a year afterwards, 18 months afterwards, people knew that they needed to go and reinstall. Uh, they needed to turn on those notifications so that Java would tell you when it needed to be patched. And uh, and you would and you would need to keep it updated. Now, if you never if you never modified the software that was on that on that machine, you could probably get away without patching it until it became so bad that people were targeting it. And that is the case. Two others from 2013. All right, those are eight years old now. Um, if you um, one of the biggest things uh, that you can do is to patch your software. Um, Qualys uh, says that the rate at which vulnerabilities are rising is exponentially higher than the rate at which operations teams are patching. This is the number one driving factor for why vulnerabilities remain unpatched. 
Now, people might say, and if you were in my session yesterday, uh, we talked about uh, what one of the reasons for companies to move to the cloud was so things like patching could be automated, was that the 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 rigmarole of updating machines or making sure that the connections were updated or swapping out broken components or old components, et cetera, all of this, all of this minutia that gets to be boring or that you put your newest IT techs on because they can figure out how to do that. Those are all things that you push up to the cloud and let automation take care of. And sure enough, patching is one of those things. So maybe, Maybe if your group is having a hard time doing patching, maybe you should consider moving it up to the cloud and figuring out whether or not you can automate that stuff. But figuring out how to do patching is one that um, that every company should become an expert at. Now, one of the things um, uh, along this line of commodity efforts or lowest common denominator when it comes to um, the, the, the cheap attacks or the easy attacks is uh, over here on the right, this image about how cheap bad actors can purchase the software or purchase the equipment, the, uh, the resources in order to launch attacks. So in order to compromise a PC or device, it's less than a buck, a phone, Maybe maybe up to 250, but and you can hire spear phishing for hire to for 100 to 1,000 dollars. If you need if you if if a bad actor wants to attack people at your company, uh, they can and they can hire a whole fleet of resources to be able to do this. And um and and these prices get lower and lower because they become such commodity efforts they become so well known and because companies are not protecting themselves against even the commodity attacks now many companies do okay over on the left not all attacks work all right and so we should keep improving our defenses and the more that we strive to increase the failure rate of these attacks it increases the cost for the attackers and I think that's the name of the game, is making sure that we are putting up the walls and that we're blocking the, the entrances, we're blocking the open ports, and we're educating our people about phishing attacks and about responding in the wrong way whenever they're, when they're approached for certain bits of information, et cetera. That, is, um, um, th that should be the minimum of, th of what we're doing. In my previous session, I talked about how CISOs today need to take the battle on multiple fronts. They need to be facing every direction in a defensive and almost in an attacking model and, uh, and, and, and guarding your gates and guarding the people within your gates and keeping these attacks out is one that um, is certainly uh, an important role for our IT leadership and for our company leadership. So first recommendation is to stay on top of patch management. Second recommendation is to, um, well, and here's the way that I've seen it work for patch management sometimes is to, is to find a way where those patch management reports that show the systems that are out of date and that are not updated, find a way to make those obnoxious. Find a way that they, they get in somebody's face who's going to do something about them, um, put them out loud and clear so that they get attention. Let's make sure that these simple ways for even the weakest attackers to attack us, that these doors are blocked. Um, vulnerability management is another proven technique that can help give you a lot of insight into, into where the gaps might be in your defense. Wallace is one of those companies that has a vulnerability management suite uh, and recently, they've added a ransomware risk assessment service into that suite. Uh, and so having a risk assessment for how susceptible your organization may be for ransomware uh, might also be something to consider and something to think about. <clears throat> now, I would say that 
ransomware is only one portion of cybercrime. Okay, we're talking about ransomware and extortion right now. And as I referred to that Microsoft Digital Defense Report, I'm taking these next pages from that report and um, and trying to uh, talk about it in a way that that might make some sense. And I hope that, and I'll say this four or five dozen more times probably, is that I really hope that you share that report with your peers and your colleagues and that you um, let it inform some of your plans and some of your budgets and some of your uh, staffing uh, as you go forward. One thing about the state of ransomware today is that um, the money is huge. Uh, the money in ransomware is comparable to nation state attack organizations uh, and and they have budgets that are being fed by people who decide to who, who pay the ransom and and they and these budgets are now able to um, drive huge scale attacks they're able to invest in in um, smothering a company with all sorts of attacks we'll get into that in just a second and until they find uh, a weak link and um, try not to make sure try to make sure that your company is not the weakest link it's not just encrypting files anymore they also uh, try and do a, a good job about exfiltrating sensitive data from your file shares or from your um, uh, financial files uh, or account lists or customer lists etc or purchase orders, et cetera, um, and, and exfiltrate that data and hold that data hostage as well for ransom so that not only will they get you to pay to unencrypt your files, but then they will say, well, you know, now we're going to just post your data publicly unless you pay us a little bit more. And um, it's a tough situation. Um, one of the, I thought I, I got some value out of understanding this table inside of the digital defense report. So I thought I'd put it in the presentation just to refer to you just and it and it informs the next table of the different roles that take that that where players are um, are undertaking in an attack. And these may be different gangs that they may be coordinated um, in different ways. There may be many people developing many different versions of malware, deploying many pieces of software uh, and trying all sorts of attacks in there before they finally get it right. Uh, but it's multiple layers of, of, uh, of resources that we need to defend against. And here's here's a, this picture here where as soon as somebody was able to get in and find a way into this company, then they invited in all of these other threat actors and all these other types of malware and said, all right, you guys go go do what you need to do. And some of those are going to be focused on specific types of employees. Some of those are going to be focused on specific types of data. Some of those are going to be focused on specific techniques to exfiltrate content or to techni techniques to learn what they need to learn so that they can better extort you. Uh, it's it's um, it's not a pretty sight, and this is what the uh, when when you do when the breach is identified and when the incident response team comes in, this is uh, you know they're they're faced with this as well in terms of okay look at the breadth of the elements that we need to clean up where we need to make sure we're removing all the artifacts where that that maybe the attackers left in there or the beacons or the communicators or listeners that they may have put in your network. Um, so that they could come back in again later, uh, or so that they could continue to uh, collect the data incrementally uh, as time goes on. So it's um, it's pernicious. Now it's you don't you're going to feel really alone if you get attacked and your systems are down, uh, but you do have friends. Okay, you do have partners, and there are resources that you know maybe they're not. Maybe they're not always as cheap as you'd like them to be, but they are uh, able to help you get back on your feet and they are able to help you identify um, what pieces need clean the most, et cetera. And so you have instant response teams, you have specialized law firms that can help with this, and you even have ransom negotiators that you can engage to figure out what the best way is to move forward if you decide that pain is the way that you need to move forward. Um, and uh, 
you know, you don't want to necessarily be in this situation and and have to get to know these teams later. Uh, so one of the recommendations which we're going to have at the end of the day is going to be prepare your recovery plan now and start to get to know who your uh, response teams and who your law firms and who your negotiators might need to be uh, so that um, the downtime that you have is as limited as possible. You know, the um, the downtime that your company has when it loses the systems like this isn't necessarily the same period as the downtime that your that your systems are encrypted. Um, for example, um, with the Colonial Pipeline attack um, in May of 2021, uh, they had the decryptor for their systems uh, within a couple of days. Um, they were back up and running in six days, but the system, but the their systems were not fully operational again for at least a month. And um, and so it took so it was it was that longer period of time when they were not uh, running at speed, they were not running at capacity, and they where they were still feeling where they, you know, they kept feeling the effects beyond that. But at least they were operational uh, to to a more reasonable level uh, uh, as they reached that month and and going forward. There's another document that. Um, is um, is more technical, but it's super helpful. And this is the um, combating ransomware, but it's from the ransomware task force. And Microsoft is one of the players on this ransomware task force. And um, and this is another report that you should uh, take a look at. Uh, many players from the uh, security industry are participating in here. And you'll and you can use it also uh, as a uh, as a better guide for saying how are we going to prepare ourselves and how are we going to be ready if something like this happens. One of the biggest questions is, do you pay? Do you um, do you take their offer and do you try and combat what they've done to you by by paying the money and you're going to be really tempted to say listen i'm dead in the water um no operations money's losing if i pay everything's back to normal but but you should know uh that, that your systems are back to normal immediately right there's no guarantee that the decryption is going to work you pay and they give you a piece of software that's supposed to decrypt it and and maybe it works maybe it doesn't um and who's to say they're not coming back and um, asking you for more uh, later or more another time? When one company pays the ransom, uh, that money emboldens the company, emboldens the uh, the gangs, the attackers. It feeds uh, expansion. It feeds more tools. It feeds better software. It feeds. Uh, it improves their position so that they can come back and they can continue to attack others. I'm not saying that, but but there is no recommendation about that that I can make about not to pay or 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 to pay. I mean, it's totally. I mean, this is why you want to have a plan to help you figure out what you're going to do ahead of time and try and help you recover as quickly as possible, so that you're in a better position, so that you don't have to pay, perhaps. Um, and the more you're protected against these things, the more you can avoid it entirely. So awareness of the situation here is probably the best way to avoid having to pay outrageous funds uh, in order to get your systems back. So Conti, maybe you've heard that name before, is was one of the leaders in this double extortion play. And inside of that Microsoft Digital Defense document, there are examples of ransom notes that Conti leaves. There are examples of chat transcripts between your IT administrators and the attackers. There are um, pictures of the websites that you would then go to the Conti websites that would say, hey, you know what, you've, if, you know, here's where you pay your money and here's where you, uh, uh, where you download your decrypting tool, but uh, whenever you're ready to pay. Otherwise, you can just stay with your encrypted 
pages and, and they're brutal on these things. And I didn't even want to um, to go over too many of those transcripts because um, I couldn't do justice. Uh, and uh, and I hope that that you do download the digital defense report and you uh, get a better understanding of how critical of how uh, of what that's going to be. Uh, if I, too many companies, in my opinion, have been are just affected way too much by this, and they and um, and so I can't raise the alarm loud enough to say, you know, let's get your house in order and let's protect as much as we can against these attacks. It's every industry as well, and it is just and it is just exploding in terms of the growth and in terms of the the future uh, technology that it is. This map over the last 12 months, uh, more or less, um, that shows, you know, it, it's pretty even. The top five industries there, consumer retail, insurance, financial, manufacturing, agriculture, government, and healthcare. Um, you know, it, but it's pretty even across others as well. So um, it, 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 there's, there's, there's not a limited, there's not a small chance that you're going to necessarily avoid this in your industry. And so you really need to say, well, what are the recommendations for me going forward, Owen? Why are you just spending so much time trying to get us all scared and worried about this? And it's not that I'm trying to necessarily get us all scared or worried. I'm trying to tell you that there's, there's not much more for me to repeat rather than these three recommendations, prepare a recovery plan, because if you can, the better recovery plan you have that you can, so that you can recover without paying as much, the, the, the ultimately the more prepared and the safer uh, you're going to be. Number two, limit the scope of the damage. And what this is, is this is, this is important. This, this means that if somebody, if one of your employees does get compromised, that if your employees aren't normally using administrator passwords and they do get compromised, the reach that the attacker has once they've compromised that employee is much less because they're not going to have admin passwords immediately. They're going to have to try harder some other way to get the admin passwords. And in Azure AD uh, and in the Microsoft world, they have a, 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 a technology called privileged identity management. And if you're, company is not already using privileged identity management. If you are a Microsoft Azure and Microsoft 365 customer, then you should be looking into privileged identity management. This is one where um, if your admin, it's just like when you have employees at home and you and you don't let them be the administrators of their laptop or of their uh, desktop computer, and you um, and and that's to protect the machine is to protect the employee. But then they ask uh, for um, an assistance to say, hey, you know what, I need this software opened up or I need this help to be. And if it can be approved, then your IT group helps them with that. You know, and that's an important aspect to do uh, with your uh, with your with your uh, employees computers. It's same thing happens with your servers. And if you can keep um, your users or your even your IT folks, so that whenever they need to make that change on the database or whenever they need to make that change on the website or make that change to a Teams or a SharePoint setting or, a, or an Azure setting or create a new virtual machine, whatever it is, that at that point they request a uh, administrator password. It's audited as to what happens while the user has that administrator password. It's only there for a couple of, for the period of time that's necessary. You know, it could be for a couple hours, it could be for 24 hours, but it, but they're only, and that is assigned to them. And so they get that password and they get it for a set period of time and they get it for a set purpose. And, uh, and hopefully people are monitoring that to make sure that things aren't, aren't going on. But this is the way that you limit the scope of damage. It's, it's a privileged identity management feature. Okay, and then you keep buttressing your walls. You keep blocking the entry points. You make it harder for them to get in. You do your vulnerability scans, you do your risk assessments, and you start knocking off the checklists and the punch lists of, of where you've identified that there might be risk. It's a brute force way to protect yourself against it, but boy, it's a lot cheaper to invest 
and doing these three things the right way than it is to try and fix your company. There's really so much here, and we only have a very short um, time here for this session, and so I'm I'm going to stop here. I'm going to just sum up by saying, please download the Digital Defense Report. And I want to say thank you for listening to me rant a little bit about ransomware, and I really hope that you avoid it, and I really hope that it avoids you. And uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to turn on a message now uh, from Microsoft about security, which I hope you listen to. It's not necessarily ransomware only, but it is one that 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 uh, that does talk about why we need protection. And once again, if if uh, I can ever answer any questions for you, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Have a wonderful day. Today's workforce is more mobile than ever, which is great. You want your employees to be able to work whenever from wherever. However, that mobility means more opportunities for a security breach. And breaches are coming more frequently than ever before. So let's talk about that. Your two biggest assets are your people and your data. At Microsoft, we're here to help empower one and protect the other. And don't think they're not connected. Having world-class security gives employees the peace of mind to do their best work. What's at stake? Let's look at some of the numbers. 3.5 million. That's the average cost of a breach. In fact, the cost of recovering from a breach is higher than protecting against one. Here's another number for you. 80. That's the percentage of employees who admit to using non-approved software-as-a-service apps in their job. Which leads us to this number. 160 million. It's how many records have already been compromised. I don't think you want to add to that number. And here's a critical one, 200 plus. That's the average number of days that attackers reside within a victim's network before detection. So what is Microsoft doing about these numbers? It begins with our unique insights. And this is an area to which no other company comes close. Our security graph uses machine learning to analyze the data so we can act on it. That's data provided by 200 billion emails monthly, 1.2 billion devices monthly, 1 billion cloud queries daily, 2 million file samples daily. And we learn from every one of these interactions. When you use Microsoft 365, you are leveraging these unique insights to increase your protection. Think of it as a global neighborhood watch program. Every customer in the world using Office 365, Windows 10, Azure, Hotmail, or Xbox Live is contributing to this security graph. Every day, every use, makes us better and your data safer. Microsoft's approach to security comes down to four simple pillars. It starts with trust. You need to trust that your organization, data, and people are protected. Intelligence, acting on the intelligence that comes from our security-related signals and insights, helping you and us detect threats more quickly. Partnerships, we're fostering a vibrant ecosystem of partners who help us raise the bar across the industry. We want to work with the industry and take a holistic approach to technology. And lastly, platform. We look at the security across identity, device, apps, data, and infrastructure. That's why we've made such deep investments in platform security that's built in, not bolt on. Microsoft is working around the clock to make sure your data and devices are safer.